Hi, in this video I'm going to walk you through the PCR procedure in today's lab. So it's as simple as just basically following this table. All you need to do is just basically fill in a bunch of PCR tubes with the appropriate components and put them into a thermocycler and you're done. So it's not going to be a very long procedure. It's just a lot of pipetting, that's all. So what you're going to find when you come into your laboratory is that there's going to be an ice bucket and that ice bucket will contain a bunch of epitubes in there. So one of those tubes will be a forward primer, a reverse primer, some DNA, some BT DNA. This is your target DNA template. This is your non-specific DNA. Okay, so it's going to be your negative control, or at least one of your negative controls. We're going to have a DNTP mix, some magnesium chloride, some. Um, this is the buffer. Yeah, this is the TAC polymerase buffer and some of the enzyme TAC polymerase. Okay, so you have a whole bunch of stuff in your, your uh, uh, ice bucket and you're going to be transferring those things in the appropriate amounts into the epitubes. Okay, so the epitubes you're going to be using are small PCR tubes, so they're in these uh, bottles and they are actually even smaller than the regular epitubes. So you're going to shake out, you need three of these. Again, whenever you're dealing with any kind of epitube or anything like that that's already sterile, this has been sterilized, that's why you see this um, autoclave tape on there. It's been autoclave, it's sterile. I just open this. So in order to make sure that I'm not contaminating everything else inside this bottle, I'm not going to stick my hands in there to pull out tubes. So you're going to shake out some epitubes onto, or some PCR tubes in this case, onto your bench top. You shake out as many as you need. In this case, I just need three. So I got three tubes and seal off the rest of it so that you minimize the likelihood of contaminating these tubes inside here, okay? Now, this is a PCR tube. There, oops, that cap just popped open. So this is a tiny little tube. Doesn't look that way, but let me just give you a, uh, an epi tube for comparison. Shake one of those out. So, Here's an epi tube, an Eppendorf tube that you've been using so far. Here's a PCR tube. Okay, so they're much smaller, which means that the well, the labeling area is also much smaller. You're gonna to need to write really, really small. Okay. So I'm just going to label these tube one, two, and three. At some point, it might make sense to actually label them with your name on the side. So right on the side. I'll make this screen a little bit bigger. Okay, there you go. So, right there, you're going to write on the side as well, but right for the time being, I'm just going to label the top. Okay? So, one, so one, two, two. There you go, three. So I got three epi tubes ready to go. I'm going to just leave them inside of my epi tube rack. So the lowest level in here is just the right size for these little tiny PCR tubes. Okay. So I'm going to op open these guys up and I'm going to start loading them according to this chart. Okay. So in this chart, what you have is a listing of what you're going to put in. So water is the first thing you're going to put in. Uh, one of these tubes is going to get some water, the rest of them will not. Okay. So the next component is your DNA template. The first tube does not get any template. It's going to be our negative control. It's one of our negative controls. The second tube is going to get our, um, our target DNA. And the third one is going to get our DNA2, which is going to be our non-specific DNA. So if we're on a different organism, basically what we're trying to show is we're going to try to show that our primers will only bind to the template DNA and they will not bind to a different organism's DNA. They will not amplify anything there. Okay. Then after that, I'm just going to go down the list and add some buffer, some DNTPs, magnesium chloride, forward and reverse primer. The last thing that's going to be added is the TAC polymerase. So the enzyme in any reaction is going to be the last component that's going to be added to the reaction mixture because as soon as the enzyme is added, the reaction is going to start. Uh, now in this case here, the TAC polymerase only works well. 
works most efficiently at very high temperatures, and so it's not going to work very well at room temperature. But again, it's a good habit to have is anytime you're setting up any kind of a reaction, you're going to set it up in such a way that the enzyme will be the last thing you add. This way, again, you know that the, la the moment that you added the enzyme is the moment that the reaction starts. Okay, so I'm going to get my uh, P, P20, and I'm going to have it set to two microliters, so P20, and it's set to two microliters. So zero to zero, that bottom zero is a decimal place. Okay, so that's two microliters, okay? So I'm going to put on my tip, again, just tap it down gently, and again, I'm going to add some water, some sterile water. Again, two microliters is not much, so I don't know if you can see this very well, but there's a very tiny amount in the tip. That's two microliters, okay? So I'm going to add that to my tube number one. It's going to get two microliters of water. Now, when you're putting in your samples, just put them along the sides of the tube and try to keep them away from one another. So I just put a little droplets of water inside this tube along the side of the wall. Okay. If you're doing this, you're going to be able to reuse your tips. So if you don't cross-contaminate your tips, you'll be fine. Okay. So what do I mean by that? Well, I've used this tip for water. It's still clean. Okay. So I can still use this tip for my DNA sample. So I'm going to use my DNA one and add that to tube number two. So I'm going to take my sample of DNA, again two microliters comes out, now it's going to go into tube number two, okay. so now I can get rid of this tip, I'm going to get a new tip for the next DNA sample, okay. Two microliters of DNA number two into tube three. Okay. Okay. So now, next component is five microliters of buffer. So now, because I have been putting the other samples along the sides of the wall. I can just reuse the same, sorry, not the same. I can now use the same tip for all three tubes because I'm going to be pipetting them away from the other samples. So I won't be touching whatever was already pipetted into it. So along the sides of the wall will help you to kind of control contamination of your sample. So I'm going to get some buffer. Okay, so I'm going to get this slip here, 5x buffer. So I'm going to use 5 microliters of 5x buffer. The final concentration of this will be so this is what five microliters looks like in a pipette tip. Okay, so that's five microliters of comparison. And so again, I'm going to look for where my droplet of water is in this tube. Okay, so that's over here. And I'm going to put my buffer away from that droplet so that my tip hasn't touched anything besides just the buffer. And so I can use the same tip now for the next tube. So in this way I can minimize the amount of waste that I'm producing by just simply being careful with where I place the different solutions. Okay, so again, I'm going to try to find that location on the wall where I put my DNA. I'm going to then put this buffer away from that. Okay, and again, same idea here. Three. I'm going to put this droplet away from where my DNA sample was, put that gently, carefully back, and then again, I can get rid of this. Next component is going to be the NTP mixture. So I'm going to use a 10 microliter, um, a P100 set to 10 microliters, so here it is. Again, 10 microliters, this is a P100. Okay, all right, so that's convincing, I hope. So 10 microliters is the lowest volume, so that would be zero, one, zero, that's 10 microliters in this one, okay? So, tip on, and DNTPs, I should start with the DNTPs because it's a larger volume. 
And again, I will try to keep this away from the other samples that I've edited so far. And so again, if you look at this too, oops, I have, oh, I should mirror the video. So I still have my droplets along the side, so I'm gonna just put this away from the others. Now this is a large volume, so it'll probably just slide down to the bottom, probably. There it goes. But again, I was putting that away from the other samples, so I haven't touched anything else with this tip, so I can use the same tip again for the next sample. As long as you're careful, you should be able to do this. Again, I have my samples on the side wall and the bottom, so I'm going to put the next one away from that along the wall. And again, there it is. Again, I can just kind of keep track of where these things are and keep them separated, okay? And so again, this way, I don't have to change tips every single time. It kind of minimizes the amount of waste that I produce in the process. Okay, so this one here again, along the side of the wall. And I can get rid of this tip now as I prepare for the next component. So next component on the list is magnesium chloride. So again, I need two microliters of that, so I'm gonna go back to my P20 and set that to two microliters. Okay. And so magnesium chloride, again, two microliters on the micropipetter. a little higher than the others now, so I'm fairly certain that's away from everything else. We'll put a little droplet along the side of the wall. Again, you can see all the little droplets on here. I'm just going to put the next drop above all of these. This way I can be relatively certain that this doesn't touch anything else or hasn't touched anything else. So again, next component, so we just put a magnesium chloride. I'm going to go ahead and add the forward primer now. So again, this is my forward primer. I'm going to take two microliters of this and add it to each of the three tubes. Again, if you don't feel comfortable um, trying to find different sides of the walls, just change tips after each one of the additions, okay? So, so you can go ahead and just add your sample and just change tip after every one. Okay, so I'm going to set this down. And again, two microliters of the reverse primer. Okay, so we got the reverse primer as well. I'm going to add two microliters of that to each tube. Now, I would like to show you something that I have been doing that you haven't been able to see yet you're not able to see my tubes, but what I have been doing is, hopefully you guys can see the locations of my tubes. Okay, so what I've been doing is I've been switching these tubes between the different holes in this pipette, tip, a pipette holder, or not pipette holder, the um, between the different holes in the epi tube holder. 
Okay, so when I just added my reverse primers, I placed this tube on this side. When I add reverse primers into this one, I will move this one over to this hole over here. When I put the reverse primers on this one, I move it over to this one. The next component I add, I'm going to add it to this tube and I'm going to move it over to this side here. In this way, I always know where I left off. So if I get distracted by something, somebody comes in, asks me a question, I have an idea of what I just finished and so that I can move on without making any mistakes. Okay, so that's something that's a tip for you guys. These um, epi tube holders tend to have a lot of holes. Please use them. So every time I add something, I move it over by one. Okay, this way I know, okay, I've added the forward primer, to, sorry, the reverse primer to this one, but not to this one or this one. And so I know that the next one will be the reverse primer to this tube and to this tube. Okay, so keep that in mind when you are working in, with your experiments, when you are organizing your experiments, you can use this to help you keep yourself organized. Okay, let's get back into it. So again, reverse primer goes into my second tube, okay. and again I'm going to place it over, move it over by one space, and so now I have two tubes on one side of this epi tube rack and one tube on the other, and so when I add the reverse primer to the last one, Now they're all on the same side. So let me just move that over so you can see it. So again, all of my PCR tubes are in the same row right now because I just finished one of the um, additions of the components. Okay, so last one is going to be the, the enzyme. So I'm going to do that. And once we have that, we're going to be ready to put our samples into the PCR uh, thermocycler. Okay. Hi, I'm back. One more thing that I forgot to tell you. You will probably have a bunch of these little tiny PCR tubes that might have some droplets along the sides still, and you want all of that liquid to be at the bottom of the tube. So what do you do? Well, you can try tapping it down on your bench, and that should get most of it down. But just to be on the safe side, it's probably better just to centrifuge it. Now, the problem is that these microfuges that we have, the rotors, won't really fit these PCR tubes. So if I were to try to put this in here, it's not going to fit. It's going to be way too small. It's going to fall right in. You will have a hard time pulling them out afterwards. So what do you do? Well, you take three, well, I have three samples in this case, so I'm going to take three actual full-sized epi tubes. I'll take one of these, three of these. I'm going to open up the cap and twist to pull off the cap. So now I have an open epi tube. I'm going to place this inside the rotor. So I'm going to place this inside the rotor and then I'm going to place my PCR tube inside of this. And that's going to prevent my PCR tube from falling in during the spin. It's going to stay put and it will be easy for me to remove it afterwards. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. Again, I'm going to just do that with the other two epi tubes to get my centrifugation ready. So again, shake out a couple of tubes. Again, just rip off the caps, twist and pull. They come off relatively easy in most cases. So now I have two epi tubes that are open. I'm going to try to put them in a balanced configuration. Try. I will put them in a balanced configuration. There's no trying on this one. You have to do it. Okay. And so now, how do I balance three tubes? Well, you put them equal distance apart. Okay. So you have my first sample in here. Okay. I have three spaces and then I have another epi tube ready for another sample. So I'm going to put that in here. And again, three spaces, one, two, three empty spaces. And again, another epi tube ready for my sample. So as you can see from this rotor now, they're all equal distance apart. They're all the same weight because they all were had the exact same volumes of everything added. And so in the end, I have a balanced configuration here. Okay, so you put that in, you spin it briefly, 30 seconds probably is more than enough. Okay, so 30 seconds spin, you take them out, and then you're ready to put them into the, the uh, thermocycler. Okay, all right, see you in the next video.